Jeremiah chapter 5. And we left off in verse number 19. And we're not in a rush. And Jeremiah typically has about 30 verses for each chapter. And I'm not in a hurry to get a chapter done in a night. We'll, we'll study the chapter out to we can get all that God wants me to teach you. I don't have all the answers. I can't give you all the answers. But what God shows me and what God deals with us every night. And if we got to do a chapter two nights, three nights, four nights, so be it. So we left off in Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 19. And the Bible says, And it shall come to pass, you have to pay attention to the word shall come to pass, because it's going to happen. When God says it's going to come to pass, it's going to come to pass. When ye shall say, this is what Judah and Israel are going to say, Wherefore does the Lord our God, Wherefore doeth the Lord our God all these things unto us? We just read a whole list. The enemy's coming. Then thou, thou, Jeremiah, shall thou answer them. Like as ye have forsaken me, Israel and Judah, and serve strange gods in your land. And they've been doing it since uh, Joshua. Go over to Joshua. I mean, uh, Joshua's about ready to die. And in Joshua... Verse 16. Joshua 24, 16. Uh, Joshua 24, 14. Now this is Joshua's closing word. Now therefore fear the Lord. Great word. Serve him. In sincerity. Great word. And in truth. Put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood. That's the Ur the Chaldees. That's the gods that Rachel stole. That's the gods that are in the, Can in the Canaanite land. In verse 15, they seem evil unto serve the Lord. Choose you whom they you'll serve. Whether the gods of your fathers served were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. All right. Everybody knows that. They got the placards on there. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord and serve other gods. What did God just tell Jeremiah? You're forsaken. Him. And even the, 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 the people. So, verse 19, same chapter. And Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord. For he is a holy God, he is jealous God, he will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord, is that what God just told Jeremiah? And serve strange gods, that's what God just told Jeremiah. Then he will do then he will turn and do you hurt. Oh. Wait till we get to the close with uh, uh, Jeremiah. I mean And consume you. That after he has done good. You're good. And the people said to Joshua. Nay but we will serve the Lord. And verse 23. Now therefore put away. Said he Joshua. Now this is going back to B.C. 1427. They have not gotten rid of all the, all the people in the land yet. Put away the strange gods which are among you. They're right there. And incline your heart to the Lord God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and his voice we will obey. And so Joshua made a covenant with the people. Where is it saying put the gods away? Friend, that's the Baptist church today. 
We've got our little gods. We've got our little dollies. we got our little hang up we got our favorite preachers. we got our favorite churches. we got our favorite this. we got our favorite that. And we're going to serve the Lord. And then we're going to bring the carnality of the of the world into the church. But we're going to serve the Lord. That's what they did in Joshua. Come back to Jeremiah. And let's read Jeremiah B.C. 612. It's been a quite a few years. And look what God says in verse 19. Like as you have forsaken me and served strange gods in your land. They were doing it with Joshua. And Joshua warned them. I read, I read today, you know, the Baptist church on freedom and liberty. That freedom and liberty is what destroyed the church. The church did not grow in the book of Acts under freedom and liberty. The church grew under persecution. And you're allowing all these religions to have freedom in America, and yet the one true living service to God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son is being put into the closet. While sins have a wide open door. I don't care what you feel. I'm not all Baptist. I'm a little bit of Methodist. And a little bit of a Puritan. Get rid of the Baptist attitude. The Baptist Catholic. You don't like it? You keep the Baptist Catholic. I don't. Declare this in the house of Jacob. Verse 20. And publish in Judah. Saying. All right, that's Jeremiah's audience. But we can take the book of, of Jeremiah and we can cast it to the church today because it's the same thing. It's the same thing all the way back in Joshua. I think there was somebody very wisdom of God to say there's nothing new under the sun. And then that guy goes and marry a thousand wives and he falls into the gods and goddesses of the people. I'm doing a study now. If you can see my post here, I don't know. The picture is, is stalled. I don't know. But if you can see, I'm doing a study now. Open up on Asterisk and Asterisk. You know who she is? She's Istar. You know who she is? She's the Queen of Heaven. And you may rank on the Catholic Church and their worship of Mary, and you can have your Estar, your Easter, and you're still worshiping the Queen of Heaven. You're no better than a Catholic. That's why I say Baptist Catholics. And that's upset some. And the ones that are upset are the ones that are holding to the gods. That go all the way back to the gods of the past. And their present. Hear now, now, hear now this. Oh foolish people. Look at God speaking. You know, when I preach on the street, and that's the ministry God's given to me, and it, and there's, I mean, there's all kinds of ministries, knocking on doors, passing out gospel, one-on-one. -on -one. And there are people who are, are very Christians, are very, how do you do that? It's turning people away. And they have no identity of preaching to what the Bible has to say. And what the Bible has to say to street preaching is true is right it's something that jesus said and the big uh, offend offense you're offending me well go grab yourself a backbone and put it into your body and grow some bones you spineless jellyfish the holy and righteous god says you're a fool and I had a man the other day, you can't call anybody fool. You know, the, you know Matthew says, you know, you're dangerous to the council. Oh, you're putting me back under the law when the, we had a dis whole discussion about the law. Okay. God calls him foolish. And without understanding. They have no understanding. We read this the other night of the holy. They have no understanding of the God they claim to worship. They have no understanding. We're a King James Bible, please. So what's the King James Bible say? I don't know. I 
Uh, you're a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. Well, you know, I'm having troubles in my life. I, I really want to get to know your God of your Bible. Pastor, hello. Yeah, I got the guy you need to talk to. You mean you can't do it yourself? I'd love for somebody to come. Hey, can you show me the God of your Bible? We had a couple, three weeks, four weeks ago. We had a guy come up to us, harassing us, assassinating us. And, and, and the biggest mistake he did was, well, what do you know? And I went 45 minutes preaching about what I know. And that guy got angry. I can go 45 minutes nonstop, take a couple of breaths, take a couple of sips of water, and for 45 minutes I can preach to you out of the Bible what I know. And what do I get out of I don't read the Bible. I don't carry the Bible. Well, you know, it, 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 it says in the Greek. Okay. I can't say it no more, but I would, I would say, you know, in the Greek. I would say, excuse me, in the Greek? All right, Wh whatever book we're in right now, start with chapter 1, verse 1, and start reading the whole book in Greek for us, please. You want to say in the Greek, in the Greek, in the Greek. All right, you read to us one the chapter we're in right now. You read that entire chapter in the Greek, and I'll be very not impressed. Oh, you know the in the Greek for your... What you wrote down in your text, but you don't know the in the Greek for reading your Bible. Yeah, I know the English. And he said, declare in the house of Jacob, published in, the, in Judah, saying, Oh, foolish people without under do you understand that? The understanding is what people get offense. <laughs> My God wouldn't say that. That's why there's modern Bibles. Which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Does that sound familiar? Because that was the expression of Jesus. You say, how can that be so? Then you never had any public ministry. We had a guy this weekend. I mean, I, I, I promote hate literature. I hate the Jews. Uh, I tell people... That if they don't street preach, they're all going to hell. And I made a Jew cry. And something about some woman fornicating, something like that. And they're going to hell. How can you not hear me with the loud voice I'm giving? And they're all lies. And they have ears they hear not. I know exactly what God's saying. I know exactly what Jesus said who is God. Fear ye not me. <laughs> He's covered by his covered by his covered by No, God says fear me. Now, I don't know if, if the ecologists and, and, and all the people, I don't know if it's just a, men's, a, a media frenzy again now to scare people up, but they're saying right now, now that summer starts, they say we're going to go into some great inflation. Prices are going to go high. Uh, by what the shelves are and by what things have been, I don't think it's a media circus. As we get closer and closer to the day of the rapture and the Antichrist coming, I believe it. It ain't going to get better because you fear God. You did not fear God. You did not trust God. You want to put your, your trust in Johnson and Johnson, put your trust in, in Pfizer's, and put your trust in Donald Trump, and, and not in God. Friend, there are volcanoes going on. There, there, there are weird weather phenomena. Even the government now saying there's UFOs. Friend, if they're announcing UFOs, we're... we're The church is apostate, and they don't even, the church doesn't even realize it. That, that one of the things that Paul writes Timothy is, you know, the church age ain't getting better. You get from the pulpit, oh, we're just a great church, we're just a wonderful church while we have all our carnalness. And they don't fear God. 
Will ye not tremble at my presence? They did that in Exodus 20, 19 and 20. They got to the point, Moses, yes, you stand between us. We fear God. That's where Moses came like a type of Jesus Christ. They don't have that fear now. They didn't have that fear at the end of Joshua. Oh, that's for me. You know, Joshua's the one said, that's for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. And they're the one, yeah, we'll serve the Lord. And they're hanging on their doodad gods. They're wearing their god. They may have it tattooed on them. They may be carrying them in their purse. And then God's going to look at this. And we read about this in Isaiah. And this, this pointed to the flood of Noah's day. But the creation, the creator God, how powerful he is. Will you not tremble at my presence, which had placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a particular degree? What is sand? And God said, I put that sand there to stop the sea. That it cannot pass it. And though the waters thereof toss themselves, and yet, <coughs> yet can they not prevail. Now there's going to be local floods. But God says, listen, there's no, no, no worldwide flood coming again. And I don't care what these environmentalists are saying. I don't care what they're saying about the ozone. I don't care what they're saying about the polar ice cap. There's no worldwide flood coming. And that when the storms do come, and the waves do go over a little bit, and there is a little bit coastal flooding, and you fear that, you get your sandbag. But you can't fear the God that made that, and to realize that in God's mercy and grace, He's the one that tells the waters, you go so far. But this people, the foolish, un 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 understanding people, had revolted in a rebellious heart. They are revolted. They're revolting and revolted. And gone. Israel's gone. Judah will be gone. Neither say they in their heart. They don't say this. Now let us be the Lord our God. They're not saying that. Later on they're going to say we fear the queen of heaven. That giveth rain both the former and the latter. And that's the seasons of rains in the land of Israel. And that's, prom that, that, that's prominent going to be at the end of the tribulation period when there's been no rain. And it has not rained particular time. Maybe it has not rained at all. And you're still not fearing God. He says, I'm not giving you no more rain. That's my rain. And friend, you can do all the Indian war dances and all the Indian rand dances. And you can, you can do whatever you do to your gods. If God says no rain, it's going to be no rain. And there's going to be nothing you can do except get right and repent and fear God. In his season, he reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of harvest. Now, God has given Israel the seasons and the rain at the proper time. There's nothing worse to get the wrong weather at the wrong time when it comes to crops. You don't want to have your crop coming up out of the ground and being and then get a big cold snowy storm. And yet God can do that. You don't want to have your crops coming up and have hail fall as it did in Exodus and has it done in other times. 
And there is a there is in the Bible there was a time that of seven years of, of great drought was coming to the land, and God said, "I'm going to give you seven years of plenty. You better stock up. You better do all." And that was for the protection of Jacob and his family. And the only reason why Egypt got the benefits of that because Egypt blessed the children of Jacob and God returned the blessings upon that Pharaoh that made Joseph in charge. Joseph was set there to take care of his family. And Pharaoh was all for it and Pharaoh and the Egyptians got the blessings from it. Now the next book that comes up there's a Pharaoh that, that rejects and curses a nation. And he and his people, they get cursing and cursing and cursing and cursing. And they die in the Red Sea. You never read about the Pharaoh died of Joseph's time. And I guarantee he's going to be one of the Gentiles you're going to find in the new earth. He, he, he didn't do anything wrong. And he helped God's people. He had his priest, but yeah, that's dispensation. That's between God and them. Your iniquities have turned away these things. What thing? The rain. So there is a period of time that rain has stopped. And your sins have withholding good things from you. What good thing? The grapes, the raisins, the wine, the figs, the olives, the wheat, the barley, fatted calves, fatted cows, sheep. What happens if, there no, if there's no rain? The livestock die. The, 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 the vegetation dies. I think we're going to start seeing that. For among my people, Israel, are found wicked men. You'll find that in the churches too. They lay wait. As he that sets snares a trap, they set chairs to catch men. You say, what's that in the church? Man, they're deceiving the people out of the pulpits and that all the time. Just to get the money. We're going to run to the law. We're not under the law. But we're going to run to a book. That's under the law. Malachi. And we're going to use that verse. And make you give, give money. And promise you. We don't believe in the prosperity gospel. But we're going to promise you. If you give tithes to, to God. Uh, you're going to get these showers of blessings. If you're warehouse. Does that sound familiar? But we're not under the law. And we don't have. The, you know the sure mercies. And we don't have to, you know, name it, claim it. But if you give your tithes to us, the church, and you give Christmas presents to Jesus on December 25th, though it's not his birthday, and though, you know, we're not really cel celebrating Eros and Cupid, and uh, but we do have a heart. And it's Resurrection Sunday, and we got... You know, we got the eggs and we got the little chocolate bunny. But, you know, it's not. That's what the Catholic Church did. You know, like I said, if you can see it from my screen, that's starting. That's thought. You know how many names she comes up before she becomes the Queen of Heaven? And all the Greeks did and all the Romans did was they took the Phoenician gods and they gave them a new name, which the Phoenicians took the Babylonian god, gave them a new name, which the Babylonian took the gods of, of them and gave them a new name. And the Catholics took the, took the gods of them and gave it a new name. And the Baptists took the gods of the Catholics and gave it a new name. It's the same candy bar in a new wrapper. I remember when my daughter was born. And and my wife found, hey, you know, we get we can get candy bars with her name and her birthday, and we had special name meaning why we named our daughter Rachel Ann R. He said, We can get all that, and we sent away for that. And just these pieces of paper came. 
My wife, my wife Lisa said, well, where's the candy? I'm like, I don't know. And to come to find out, they just sold us the wrappers. We were to go out and buy the Hershey's bar, take off the wrapper, and have some kind of glue or tape. And we had to put our own wrappers. It's the same Hershey bar with a different wrapper. That's what it was. There are snares and traps in the churches, all denominations. The Catholics will put you in a snare and, and scare. If I don't appease the Pope and the priest, if I don't get buried in a Catholic cemetery, where's my soul going to be? Well, if me and my wife don't get married, she's a Baptist, and we don't get married in a Catholic church, so we get married outside the railings of the Catholic church. Because she's a Baptist, we can't get married at the altar. Listen, I've known born-again, Bible-believing, uh, saved Christians that were Catholic and took a while to leave the church because that little... Uh, well, if I get the Catholic Church mad at me, what am I going to do? Don't worry about it. You're not under the Catholic Church no more. You're under the blood of Jesus Christ. But that's that... That's that, that takeover that religion had. I'm told, I think it's the Mormon, that you have to show your pay, your, you have to show your IRS paperwork to the church so the church can say, this is how much you owe us in time. It's nonsense. Okay. As a cage full of birds that only shows up in Revelation 18 too, the bird cage. Now, that's not a house bird cage. We got birds here. Jesus told us what, what that thing is. They, they had cages of birds that they were selling in the temple. The doves and, and, the, and the pigeons and the, all that needed to be sacrificed. The turtle doves. So there's a lot of birds in the cages. Their houses are full of deceit. That runs back to verse 26. There are people who are in churches, whether they be the, the, the people that sit in the pew or the deacons or the trustees or the pastors or, or the teachers, whatever office they hold in that church or they hold no office, they may be home and they have set church, uh, traps, they have set snares, and they're full of deceit. And you may think that they're one of the good Christians. I had one when I was, I was first saved. I was in church. I think it was, I think it was like a year I've been saved in the church. And there was this insurance company. And they would, and I was told that the, the the one of the marketing people was saved. And he got this he got this great idea is if I could train the agents. Whether husband or wives, or you act like you were a husband and wife. You may not have been married. And he would have class and show, this is what the Christians say, this is how the Christians act, this is what the Christians believe, this is what the Christians do. What you do is you infiltrate that church, you become their friends, you have them to think you're, you're saved and all that, and you, you get together, you, you sit down at the coffee table, you sit down and you have tea and crumpets, whatever you had, pieces of cake, whatever you do, you have fellowship with the people. And then once you become their very good friends and, and, and they think you're a good church member, you can sell them insurance. I'm not going to give the name. But it was a big company and they went out everywhere. My pastor told me that church. And when my pastor found out as bad as this church was, he threw him out on this on the on the air. Get out of here. But there were a lot of people that were deceived. I'll tell you another thing. Let me give you another thing here. And we'll move on. Because my job is to teach you. Don't you ever dare sign a pledge card in any church. Because you would think with that pledge card, okay. I'm not going to go to that church no more. I'm not going to go to any church. I give up. Or I'm going to go to another church. 
or I got saved. I, I'm a Christian. I'm born again now. My sins are in the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm going to get me a King James Bible believing church. Or it may be a King James Bible believing church I'm talking about. And you signed a pledge for whatever that pledge that thing is. I've been in two churches where they had pledges. One. I've been in one church that had the pledge, and I think I was in a visiting church that had a pledge. I was in two churches, I don't remember. And then when I went to school to be the doctor that I am, and being taught of the Pharisees and, 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 and all the junk that goes on in the churches, like one of the things I learned, all eyes closed and all, you know, oh yeah, I see that hand. I didn't, my eyes weren't closed. But you can leave a church, and, and I contacted people about this found out you can leave that church after signing that pledge and legally they can go to court though they're Corinthians Paul says don't take them to court they don't care they can legally hold you obligated for that pledge that you pledge wherever it was that's deceit now that pledge may be a hundred dollars that pledge may be for the rest of your life. I don't know. And some pastors now in some church are going to be, I can't believe you said that. Don't get involved. with. As soon as they hand you a pledge card, and don't throw it in the church garbage. Throw it in your purse's garbage or your pocket gar garbage, and then throw it in your garbage when you get home. Don't get involved with pledges, even amongst the church. Okay. Therefore they are become great and waxen rich by deceit. I mean, it amazes me that you get these people to come in 12 bucks for a CD. Is there gold inside of it? I can go to that big chain store and get CD $7.99 with sales tax. Oh, that's why churches don't like. They are waxing fat. They shine. That's a particular thing. Yay, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They are wickeder than the wicked. That's what God just said. And there's all kinds of things that churches will do and do. They deceive their people. It's foolish. I'll tell you one other thing too. The, the churches have church offering envelopes. Now I got suckered on this one. I was going to this church and I said, I want on the envelope, I wanted to go to this missionary. I, I heard I heard great great things about this missionary group. So I put, you know, this is my tithe, missionaries, and I had a couple of missionaries. I wrote that down to missionaries, and it comes to find out. Somehow I became mistaken. There were no missionaries in that area. Where did my money go? I'll tell you, you say, well, how do you get out of that one? You want to give money to your church. And you want to specifically claim it to a missionary, to a group, visiting preacher, a special offering, whatever it is. You take your check. And you put in the memo, not not the envelope, you put on the memo that check, I want it to go to this country, I want to go to Jim Smith, who, you know, who's come by, and, you know, a special offering, I want to go to this family. And if they, that church, violates what you wrote on the memo, not on the offering envelope, on the memo of your check, if they violate that, then you can take action against them. You say, well, about the church envelope? That gets thrown in the garbage. I was putting money into me. I thought I would send it to a missionary. And and the pastor's wife would hand it. Well, we don't have that missionary. I'm like, then where did my money go? I put it in the general fund for the missionary. I don't believe in your general fund of missionaries. How come nobody came to me when I put down 
this country. How come no one came to say, uh, uh, Stalin, we don't have a missionary in that country? That was months. So since we didn't have that, I just we just put it in the general fund of the mission. Uh, that may not go into general mission. It just may went into the pizza party fund or the Coca Cola fund or whatever. I didn't put it on my check. If I had put it in my note in that check, go to this country. And they didn't do that. I, I could pull up my church and say, hey, listen, you guys got to give an answer. Just because they're a church, don't think you can trust them all. I said all. I didn't say, maybe you got a great church. Good. They judge not the cause. They're out for their own gain. They don't weigh it. That, 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 the, the person that handled the, 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 the income of the church did not say, they didn't judge, hey, you know what? This guy is putting down a missionary that we don't have. We can't go talk to him. To pull him off to a side. You're mistaken, and I get mistaken a lot. Or maybe I didn't get mistaken, and something was mentioned, and it was to deceive. Maybe they mentioned that country. I wasn't deceived. And you know what? It wasn't really so. And we got you in a snare. Because I found out myself just by yakking and talking. To real hey, wait a minute. What's going on here? There's no missionary. I started talking about this country and how, you know, how wonderful. And then the pastor's like, we don't support a country like that. Uh-huh. I don't know. The cause of the fatherless. And again, in the law, the fatherless and the widows were to be taken care of. And by, by here we are now, they were taking advantage of the fatherless and the widows. They were putting them under persecution. They were putting them under great loads of burdens. Yeah. For three quarters of your pay, we will say and burn a candle in prayer that your hubby can get out of purgatory. And don't tell me that mess. I came out of that mess, the Catholic Church. And the moment you say, well, I ain't got no more money, well, we ain't got no more candles and we got no more prayers. And that you deceive that family so much, that woman will do whatever she can get to burn a, for you to burn a candle, which you probably don't, and for you to say a prayer, which you probably don't. That's that long prayers that Jesus spoke about. The Catholics do that today. If you don't get your last rites read to you before you die, I don't know what we can do for you, except for go after your widow and your family. Maybe get them to pay us so we can pray. That's deceiving. I was in the Catholic Church. I was a young boy. And I saw the little candle. And I'd go over and burn a candle. One day, I, I, done, I burned a lot. You know, I think, and the, the priest or the one of the, I don't know, do flops. He goes, son, you didn't put your quarter in. I said, what for? I don't have a quarter. He said, you got to put a quarter in to, to burn one of those candles. And you got to have somebody in mind that when you put your quarter in and you like that can, is to help that soul out of purgatory. What? He, ain't got, he told me, he said, you ain't got no quarter. You have no business lighting that candle. Now, he wanted me to go run to mom or grandpa or whoever, get quarters to burn candles for my family and his That's deceit. And you get these, it used to be when I grew up again, when I was first say, you get these televangelists and all that. You send in your prayer request with a check. And there was one, there was one organization, they found all the prayer requests in the dumpster, and the only thing taken out of there was, was all the checks. And they, they were caught. They opened up enough to take the checks out and throw the. I'm telling you. 
I, there are churches that think I'm fooled. I'm not fooled. I know exactly what you're doing. Now, the people may not know, yet they prosper. This is going on in Jerusalem. This is going on in Israel. And it's going on throughout the world today. And Psalms tells us, Brent, not, not. Because this is why we have the judgment seat of Christ. And this is why we have the great white throne judgment. Let God take care of it. And you ain't going to fool that judge. You ain't going to bribe God. And God said... I hear the cries of the fathers, and I hear the cries of the widow. Now, the way things are in life, it may not get solved on this planet Earth. You may have to go off into the judgment. You know, th th there, was, there was one ruler, and he said, this woman kept pestering. Oh, you know, help me do this. Do this help. And, and you know the only reason why he answered her request is because she would not shut up. Is that justice? Is that just? I'm going to answer them just because they just leave me alone and they'll shut up. You know, I say I say our government in America, it's like NASCAR. Except for one thing. When you see a NASCAR, on the, on the, on the NASCARs, they got everybody that pays that team, that driver. They got a sticker there, whether it be a telephone company, whether it be an insurance company, whether it be a pharmacist, whatever, that company that sports that team, that car, that driver, that mechanic, they, they put their sticker and their name on that car. And he wears it, you know, the uniform, and has got all the... You guys, if you were to do that to our Congress, our House, and our President, he would have to wear a patch for everybody that he's been bribed. His uniform would look like a NASCAR uniform before he gets in that car with all the little patches. I'm not saying all of them, but my jury of them, they're being paid by other. And who cares about the taxpayer? Who cares about the little man? You know what I mean? Jelly bean? That's also with the churches. You wait till the day the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment when God opens it all up. When God reveals all the banking account, all the money, all the checks, all the credit cards, all to the very last penny or whatever your tiny little money piece of your country is. When God reveals it all out in the open and hidden. You know what I mean? And the right of the needy do they not judge. I hear that. We got Memorial Day weekend. And how many of our U.S. vets are homeless? A lot of them. I've been a street minister. I've met a lot of them. I sat down and talked with a lot of them. And how many young people who've never had a job in their life, and all she does is lay in bed and make babies, and she's well fed on the welfare system. All these people come, keep coming and running to America. If you turn off the free checks and turn off the free programs and turn off the free food and turn off the free medical and turn off all the free stuff, that hey, if you don't, if you're not a worker, you don't fill out a W form on your IRS, you don't get nothing. That that send people away. And I'm talking about a man that goes into the military. It, whether it be one year, four years, 20,000 years. He gets a, a lifetime IRS card. And if you work, you, you, you filed your taxes, you have your paperwork filed with the IRS, you can get benefits, and a, a vet can get benefits through the United States. They can help you out. You never worked a day in your life. You never not even a citizen in this country. You don't have paperwork to the IRS. We're not taking care of you. That's the answer. But we allow everybody, you know, that Statue of Liberty needs to be taken down. We just stay home. We can't take care of our own. We can't take care of our warriors. So don't give me a Memorial Day and, and you know, and the president goes, visits the Wall of Honor and lays a wreath. 
big deal. What's that reef do for the for the uh, for the vets trying to get hospital care at the VA? That you guys stand in line. God's going to judge all that one day. So I not visit for these things. God said, I'm going to judge for all these things. The good and the bad. Save the Lord. Just make sure you know who's talking. Let's save the Lord. Shall not my soul, God's soul, avenge on such a nation like this? What nation? His people. And the Bible says, realize that you not know that the judgment shall begin at the house of God. And if it's going to begin at the house of God, don't you know it's going to go out further and further and further and further to the nations that utterly reject God? No one's going to get away with anything. No one's going to get a free ticket. Nobody's going to get a free ride. They will be all judged justly and rightly and correctly by a righteous and holy judge. Even the angels one day will be judged. There's only three that are not judged. If I read my Bible correctly. Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. They're cast into the lake of fire before the judgment, the great white throne judgment ever shows up. Read your Bible. A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. Uh-oh. You think wonderful, ooh, great. And a horrible. Those two words that don't go together. I mean, you picture, here's a woman, she's giving birth to a baby, here, here comes her bundle of joy. It's a wonderful, horrible joy. What did I give birth to? You know, the boss calls you in the room. He said, you know, at 3 o'clock, I want to see you before you leave. You're like, okay, am I in trouble? And you get into his room, he gets his office, he says, have a seat. I got something wonderful to tell you and horrible. <laughs> and it's not, I got good news and bad news for you. What do you want first? It's wonderfully horrible news. What is it? The prophets prophesied falsely. Do you not see that in the churches today? I can name any names of, of men behind the pulpits and behind the podium that taught the Bible wrong. The priests, that's the Levites, bear rule by their means. That's, that's the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church leaves the, the Bible for their traditions and their ways. And they'll say, who cares what the Bible says? Nothing new under the sun. And the Levitical priesthood, which are in Jerusalem, which are in Judah. That's what the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, and the high priests were doing in Jesus' time. Nothing changed. And my people love to have it so. You know how I many people sit under in a church today and it's wrong? It, it's totally against the Bible. And they just say, we just love it here. We have such a great church. How about that erected penis up on the roof? Oh no. Don't say that. How about the goddess Esther with all the boobies? Oh no. Don't say that. What about Mary Tay Moose? Mass. In your, no, 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 we can't, Pastor, shut him up. Shut him up, Pastor. We got it wonderful here. We like it here. We love our pastor. We love our church. And God's up in heaven. <laughs> Poor, wretched, miserable. Not gonna be too happy to judge the seat. You're happy now. You ain't gonna be happy to judge the seat of Christ if even some of them make it to the judgment seat of Christ. And what will ye do in the end thereof? 
2 Timothy 4. 2 Timothy 4. This is what we're supposed to do. 2 Timothy 4, 1. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, there one, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Second Advent. Preach the word, be in season, out of season. What's out of season? I preach on the street. And it should be kept in the church. I, I'm preaching out of season. I'm preaching outside of Sunday. That's what it means. Reprove, rebuke, you offended me. Exalt with all long suffering. <laughs> you got to put up with them. And doctrine. It's not opinions or likes. For the time will come they will not endure sound doctrine. But they will, they will to their own lust shall heat to themselves. Teachers have an itching ear. Oh, teacher, take care of us. Oh, preacher, take care. Oh, we just love it. Lighten it down. Butter it. Oh, give us it with some fried chicken in the chicken house. Oh, we love it. Oh, we love it. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. How many times I sat here with my, in my living room with the pastor here, and I told him the truth, and he walked out here denying the truth. And shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of evangelists, make full reproof proof of thy ministry. Okay? Chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lover of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemy, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affliction, truth breakers, false accusers, incompetent, fierce, despisers of those things which are good, traitors, petty, high minded. This is the last days of the church age. Lovers of pleasures, that's the church. More than lovers of God, that's the church. Having a form of godliness, oh, we're nice and holy, we're great, we're wonderful, great Christians, but. Denying the power thereof. From such turn away. For such they have crept into houses or creep into houses. Led captive silly women. That's God speaking through Paul. Laden with sins. They are full of sin. Oh, we just make them so happy. So great. Oh, you make me happy. He gave me flowers on Mother's Day. I'm a sinner and I got flowers from our church on Mother's Day. I must be doing good. I haven't been to church all year. I go twice a year and I get a gift on Mother's Day. We may get some chocolate on Easter. That's the end of the church age. And we're coming to the end of the time of, of Jerusalem and Judah. It's a sorry state. And again, read Revelation chapter 3. Where it starts off the church of Laodicea and finishes the chapter. That's what period we're in. It's nothing to boast about. 